This was something I did not expect. Tony Ferguson is coming back for September 10th, which is roughly five months after getting knocked unconscious by Michael Chandler for the first time in his career. He's going to be going up a division to 170, a weight class he hasn't fought in since 2011, and he's going up against Li Jing Liang. So the welterweight move, we love that, right? We want to see Tony Ferguson go back to the weight class that he started at and where he showed to have more power at. He had more knock ability. He was his wrestling more back then. He seemed to be a lot stronger physically and it might actually be the move that makes him look healthier but five months after that knockout loss in may and Li Jing Liang is an opponent that i don't think anybody expected and honestly tony should be questioning his managers or whoever was making this decision for him to fight a monster like that and honestly what does tony win out of this it's a good win at welterweight but it doesn't really rise him anywhere it's not a big money fight it's not a big fight that a lot of casual fans are going to be looking at. There's a lot more to lose for Tony Ferguson than there is to win here. Because if he loses to Li Jing Liang, who's not even in the top 10, that pretty much shows everybody that Tony's done done. There must have been better opponents for him. Like, maybe even Robbie Lawler would have been a lot better. Nick Diaz, if he's still fighting. Jorge Mazadal would have been great. Because now we know that Wonderboy is looking to be fighting Shavkat, which is another questionable decision from Wonderboy's camp. Even though for Shavka, it makes perfect sense. That's the guy he wanted. Could he have waited out for Conor McGregor? Which is actually something he should have done. I mean, the guy just got knocked out not too long ago. And it was very bad. The guy was out for what seemed like for minutes. The timeline to fight Conor was perfect for him. Wait until early next year. Maybe even the middle of next year. And get that big money fight that he deserves. But it seems like he doesn't even want it. He doesn't even care about it. Tony Ferguson as a fighter has always been amazing. He had a great career. Amazing to watch and all of that. But as a businessman, to make money, to get that exposure. He just doesn't have the mind for it, it seems. Because it seems to be much better opponents for him at this stage than going up against someone like Li Jing Liang, who can very well knock him out. And I don't think any of us are ready to see Tony get knocked out again, as that's exactly what Li is going to be looking to do. That guy swings like he wants to take your head off. He may not be as technical as some of the other guys that Tony's just fought. I mean, Tony did fight Chandler, Dariush, Oliveira, Geishi. These are some of the top fighters in the world. Li is not necessarily on that same level. So technically speaking, we can absolutely see that Tony could do some good things here. But going up a division, fighting a guy who's bigger, in his prime, has momentum behind him, confident, and Tony's coming off a big knockout loss, he's older now, isn't letting his brain recover, there's a lot going against him. And one shot from Lee could be enough to KO Tony if Tony did not recover from that knockout loss. And how could he? Five months after that Chandler fight, and we have to also talk about the sparring and training before this. So really, it's like four months if he's been sparring for the training camp. His chin is already getting touched before the fight is even happening because he has to put some rounds in there. I mean, he's training boxing a lot. For sure, those boxing trainers are going to want him to spar. And Li Jingliang is coming off a big win against Muslim Salikov. Looked really good in that fight too. I don't like this move for Tony, man. I really don't. I can absolutely see him getting knocked out. I can see him doing well until that happens. Because technically speaking, Li Jingliang's not as well-rounded as some of the other guys that Tony just fought. I mean, he does kind of the same thing in most of his fights. Li's style composes of a lot of looks up top, a lot of feints and angles that he wants to give you. And it's idly. So... When he's just standing away, he's always giving looks non-stop. And off of that, he's always battering you with light kicks. So you constantly think something up top is going to come, but then he's kicking your legs. And you know when he swings up top, he's going to try to KO you with every single punch. So it creates this respect for his hands from a lot of fighters. And before they know it, their legs are already beat. They're already deadened by Lee's constant work on them. And then he comes in on you with that right straight hybrid uppercut that comes up the center a bit into that winging left hook. That's how he even knocked out Santiago Ponzinibbio. And with that left hook, he takes off a very hard angle. So if you're trying to intercept him with straight punches, he gets right out of there. And he threw this same combination constantly throughout the whole three rounds against Muslim Salikov. And who threw a combo like this at Tony? Justin Gaethje hit him with something similar over and over again. Instead of a right straight, he was throwing a lot more of right overhands into left hooks. And from that right hand, Tony kept turning away from it. He kept trying to roll with the punch. But because he did that, he's not able to see the follow-up left hook. And that's why Justin was able to hunt him down with that. Lee G. Leon could do the exact same thing, but being a guy who's even bigger. And going up against Tony, who might not have the same chin as he used to. He didn't give himself enough time to recover. And I could see the same thing happening to Tony again, to be honest. He can make some things work before the combination comes out. If he puts some activity on Lee, keeps that crazy output on him, and just always be at the end of his reach because he does have a little bit of a reach advantage over him. And the perfect strategy for Tony would be to go for takedowns if Lee starts exploding with combos. 
That is what we don't see from Tony anymore. And I wish he went to more takedowns, man. I just want to see it at this level. Lee is a hard guy to take to the ground sometimes. He is a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I mean, he even took down Muslim Salikov, which was very impressive. So it may not come easy in this fight, especially a guy who's bigger than him. But it would be a good, like, reinforcement shot instead of trying to just strike with the leech over and over again. I think if that happens, if they start going back and forth with each other, even if Tony is catching Lee more than Lee's catching Tony, I think Lee might eventually knock him out because Lee has an amazing chin, man. Granite chin. Whereas Tony not recovering from the knockout loss, I just don't see him having that kind of chin anymore. It actually reminds me a bit of what happened between Davis and Figueredo and Joseph Benavidez, where Benavidez came back way too soon after that first fight. In the second fight, he was getting dropped all over the place. So at the end of the day, I don't know what was going in Tony's head to take this fight. I don't know why he wanted this. I don't know why he's going up to 170 to fight a guy like that. I am curious how the fight is going to go down, but I'm going to be watching through my fingers, man. I don't want to see Tony get KO'd again.